Okay. So we are in the chapter six of Bhagavad Gita, and this chapter is all about meditation, right? So uh, Krishna was telling Arjuna that one should um, conquer himself, one should uplift himself uh, with the self-effort, and one should not let himself degrade. You know, because the self is one's own best friend, and the self is one's own um, worst enemy, right? So he started. Uh, he set the stage by you know uh, giving the insight into uh, how things are currently inside you, right? And then he tells, uh, unless you master yourself, yourself will be your worst enemy, right? And for the person who has mastered himself uh, or his inner state of mind, uh, for that person her, himself is his best friend, right? So he's saying by default it is your worst enemy. By default, what is happening inside you, your base desires, your emotions. Uh, these things are working against you. They are like well, your worst enemy. They are uh, dragging you in a, you know, <laughs> in a, a wrong direction or in a, a difficult direction. Uh, on the other hand, the person who have conquered himself, uh, conquer his mind, conquer his thoughts and emotion, his inner world. For him, the self is his biggest friend, right? Uh, you can, he can use his mind. Uh, he can use him, you know, his uh, faculty, his inner faculty for propelling uh, himself. And so this was uh, the starting point. This is the starting point. And then he's saying how meditation will take you from here uh, to the final liberation. Right. So he's giving. Uh, so then he tells. Then he tells for the person who has conquered himself. Right. So the, for the person who has conquered himself, um, he has achieved the final peace. Right. And for that person, uh, the pain and pleasure, heat and cold, and you know, praise and ridicule is the same. Right. And for that person um, who has, uh, you know, after achieving the peace, has realized himself, uh, he his uh, victory over senses are firm, and his wisdom is firm, and he sees gold and dust kind of the same, right? Now we are seeing these things different because we have like a different desires. We don't see that very clearly, but we do have like a very different desires which makes which distort our vision. So he's saying like once you establish there, right? Once you have conquered yourself, once you conquered this uh, uh, this inner self, your mind, then for you, th then the yoga is automatic in a way, right? That's what he used to say. Like yoga is basically acting from this place of equanimity. You have ar arrived at equanimity, right? So that's uh, the current situation, and that's the end result he is uh, explaining. And then he explains what is the process of meditation how one should pro meditate right so he gives the basic instructions a place should be clean not too high not too low and you should firmly sit on that um, make sure your back is straight your neck is straight your head is straight you are like um, you don't have so many you don't you know let go of these uh, different desires and positions and all these uh, things which distort your mind and firmly establish in the celibacy and fear be the fearless and then practice meditation for self purification, all right? And uh, he further goes on like, uh, don't go into extreme. He gives the clear instructions on don't go too much in the extreme. The person who is uh, you know eat too less or too much or sleep too less or too much, uh, the yoga is not for him, right? On the other hand, the person who's regulated in his diet, regulated in his recreation, regulated in his activities, that person can purify himself with the help of yoga. Right, and once uh, the purification happens, um, that person can see himself in his purified mind. Right. So currently, the state of mind is very restless. Right. So we cannot really uh, see the what exactly I am, what is the nature of reality, and all these things. Right. But for the person whose mind has been stabilized, right, the person whose mind is stable uh, with the practice of meditation, he has purified himself. There's not too much chaos inside it's like silent peaceful concentrated mind in that kind of mind you can see who you really are right you can realize yourself self-realization uh, that sort of stuff so you can realize yourself and for that person uh, wisdom gets firm right and he does not see anything more valuable than what he is experiencing right uh, so he does not find anything more valuable so he does so at that point, the, the same thing he was telling in the earlier chapter also, once you tasted that, for the 
the desire for like sense pleasures and different things just fall out right you don't see anything higher than that right doesn't mean you don't do anything <laughs> but it means more like uh, you are no more stress there's no more stress there's no more restlessness of you know doing this doing that uh, you are you have arrived at the place of uh, satisfaction right satisfaction a deep sense of well-being and um, you know not too much uh, selfish desires are left at that point right and he's saying consider that state to be free freedom from the sorrow right so that's uh, you know that's like the kind of meditation he's teaching uh, uh, like prescribing and then he goes further on and say uh, practice this meditation with strong determination right and do not get deviated from it let go of any desire that comes from the mind you know and with the confidence slowly slowly focus your mind focus your intellect into the self right uh, instead of you know focusing it on the how should i achieve that planning and all these kind of stuff and different thoughts and emotions slowly slowly take your mind out of them and focus it on the self and then once you and then the person who keeps practicing it ultimately gets purified and then you know once you achieve the self realization you you know you have cut down all the sorrow and you experience the extreme bliss or whatever and and that kind of person can see other person's pain and pleasure right he can see that everybody is kind of the same everybody is exactly the same and this he realizes this unity and then he can be you know truly compassionate can see other person's pain and pleasure and all these kind of things and he get established in the self now now arjuna says like uh, the yoga that you are describing the yoga of equanimity um, i cannot see it because my mind is so restless and so turbulent and so you know force so much uh, you know has so much strength uh, i feel like you know being able to control my mind or being able to master my mind is almost like controlling the wind right so the krishna is uh, replying to that he's saying definitely the mind uh, controlling the mind or mastering the mind is uh, a hard thing to do right it's uh, it's not that easy but with the right practice with the right practice and you know dispassion dispassion here means vairagya means like letting go of different you know unnecessary desires with the right practice and dispassion um, it is practical it can be done right and then he's saying with the uncontrolled mind yoga is a hard thing but for the person who is uh, who has a controlled mind um, uh, yoga is very practical to do right so that's uh, chapter 6 on meditation and we'll move to the next chapter next time